if we do. Only very, very, very minor missiles. Oh, I believe those side missile is a little lower. Yeah, all her projectiles are lower. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and also, her forward air has a uh, electric property instead of a uh, fire property. But I don't really know if that if that really adds too much. It just it just goes about how she deals with Pikmin uh, or not. So in this matchup, that's a that, non-factor. Yeah. yeah. But just anyway, that, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, we're starting to see the the game I was kind of expecting, where Siski is trying to hold center to the best of their ability, and they're pretty much only using the charge shot to smoke out the uh, the Luma, but they're holding onto it just to try to get whiff punishes. Yeah, yeah, good stuff right here. Just hanging onto the stage right here with that Luma, doing some good old-fashioned Rosalina and Luma ledge trapping for sure. Ooh, waiting patiently for the uh, the up smash roll the platform as well. That's something that I, we were talking about, like, you know, like Samus so much that I forgot to mention that Rosalina's up smash, especially with Luma, obviously, is quite good. It comes out very, very fast, and it's a very quick and large option to be able to just, like, stuff out landings. And like you mentioned earlier, Laird, Rosalina, she's not that slow. Character's actually not, like, very slow on the ground. She's able to catch not. up pretty quickly. So run-up, up smashes are something that are probably going to be pretty common with this character out of disadvantage. Uh, if Siski doesn't have their, like, their bomb stalling on par. Yeah, now the thing about Siski is they they are playing the matchup really well. I think their main MO is to get rid of that Luma because that leaves a pretty exposed uh, Rosalina to basically be at the mercy of your projectiles. And if they commit to going for the gravitational hole, which you can bait out, by the way, because you can cancel charge shot very easily uh, and get those grabs like we saw a second ago, uh, you can be able to grill them with pretty much whatever. But the thing is, you gotta get rid of that Luma. And that Luma a second ago was the big thing to take away that stock with that rapid jab. Oh my god. Yeah, definitely a really good play right there, especially with the Luma on deck to get that extra damage out here. Hitting with Samus Jab 2, probably the worst move in her entire kit. It if is. We're being, if we're being honest, yeah. Oh, oh there's a the charge on the other side okay. of the level. Wow. Let me let me break that down. They dropped the bomb at ledge to stop the Luma from going through or to possibly clip Hamaka. Hamaka went through and hit the Luma, which left the, the shield that, that Rosa has completely out of the way of the charge shot, which is able to take the game. But I don't think they have a jump, and yeah, I, I don't think Siski can make that back. No, they can't, and Hamaka doing a very good job. I, I, I said that Siski, the way for them to win with the whole center, but Hamaka's doing a good job of smoking them out of advantage uh, whenever they have less stage. There's that up smash again, completely beating the uh, the drop loop platform forward air right there. Stuffing out before the hitbox is even there this time around. And I gotta say, on stage, you know, the creativity on the part of Siski has been great. Like, utilizing that charge shot to catch the end of the gravitational pull. Uh, not the gravitational pull of the, uh, the launch star, knowing that there was no way for gravitational pull to come out. But still, off the level, man, the gimps have been so grimy from Homie God. is doing a fairly good job keeping them in the air as well. You see Siski being forced to go back in the corner as well on this tiny stage, not really giving them too much room to work with, despite the tiny stage essentially being what they wanted. And now down to last stock is Siski, just holding on for dear life, trying to fish to take this stock right there with a the down smash, unfortunately whipping. Yeah, the, that Nair, though, is very strong. It almost ended up killing there. Vomit ledge. Nice catch on the jump order. Will be killing because Rosa is hella light. But this is a top 16 qualifier, so I don't think Siski's going to be willing to drop this game uh, as easily as you might expect in a situation like this. I feel like we might be seeing a last hit situation in the making game. Yeah, we very well might be, especially if uh, Siski's able to get back down on stage and somehow find a way to control this neutral again. Step one has got to be to get rid of that star, and that charge shot is going to be one quick way to do that. Down at uh, Hilt. I couldn't hear Still the noise. I, yeah, I couldn't hear the, the the cry of the Luma right there. There was no noise oh, on, oh. on our end, so I couldn't hear it. So the Luma was not dead, and instead will come back another day to kill Siski right there by the head. Oh, beautiful space and trap by the puppet character there. I, I'd like to mention that Luma ate a basically 30% charge shot, maybe a little bit more, 31, 32, and a down tilt, which is 16%, and still lived. Yeah. That's, um, that had to have been a full health star. Right yeah, there. well, I, I do know that uh, Luma, I think Luma health got buffed recently. In, in, I, in, in a recent patch, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you might be right about that. I was going to have to check that myself, but it's definitely, you know, good enough health to eat that, obviously, with the charge shot up on the way. And that's just crucial right there. Not even just to have Luma to just take that for you. Again, if you have any way, part of the reason the Olimar matchup is not really considered that good uh, for uh, for Samus is because it's just so easy for them to just eat the charge shot. And if you take away yeah. charge shot... Well, not take away charge shot entirely, but, you know, you just find an easier Three, way to work around charge two, shot like that to the point where you can still just sort of go. play your game and not have to adapt to Samus as much. 
That's crucial. You've taken away a huge part of her neutral. You've taken away the number one thing that people complain about when it comes to Samus, for sure. Right. So, look, Samus is an amazing character in the meta. That hasn't changed, but... Again, there are a few very niche character picks that do completely invalidate her best option, which makes her a lot less scarier. And right now, Kamika is just kind of approaching and doing their very best to make it hard for Siski to make it back. Siski finally does after sustaining 115%, basically unanswered percent. Yeah, those lingering hitboxes that they have off the level right there with that uh, screw oh, attack Luma. and the upbeat, just narrowly Luma. able to make it back. Luma is dead right now, though, so a good opening. I think Siski giving a little bit too much space to charge up projectile. I think this is a situation where you want to be aggressive uh, and try to keep Hamaka in disadvantage. But honestly, I feel like the patience paid off because that's another dead Luma, and now the bombs are starting to come out, even up the percent a little bit better. Siski starting to adapt to the matchup real nicely and going for that aerial upbeat, which does eat shield. Um, but that time, Luma, or Rosa being a little bit too tall towards the shield pop. He's going to poke that, that. That Luma is gone. It's showtime. So you gotta oh. go. your, your number one priority when you're fighting Rosalina and Luma should be to just get rid of that star at all times possible. Well, Rosalina literally drops a tear without that thing when she has to actually fight you raw. But hey, without the Luma, finally able to get that up air and killing off the top is Homiko right there. Getting the lead again, but the back air is such a strong hitbox on the part of Samus, evening it out real quick. Back air is one of the coolest moves in the whole game. And man, it's very strong. It doesn't even need the sweet spot to kill, but if it's sweet spots, you can, you can be dead to 90. It's one of those moves. Oh, but there's these up air strings. Now, a little known tech about, you can actually auto cancel up air uh, and get a, a, a couple true combos into, into up air, or so up as well, and, and do a lot. But right now, Luma is just a little bit too high to get hit by that forward air. And I think it would have killed had the full combo come through, but it hasn't yet. Right now, Siski's starting to fight back at like a 30% differential, which isn't great, but it's not bad. It's definitely better than any uh, percent situation that we saw last night. You know, Hollow Bastion, another small stage, allowing Siski to be able to really break through and do that zone. And beautiful patience by the ledge of Siski right there to time that neutral get up just right to get around that. It's sort of got like, Rosalina has a little bit of that like Slight King DDD factor in that like, you know, with their ledge trapping, there are some moments where every option is covered and it's not about what option you pick from the ledge, it's about how you time it. 100% yeah. about how you time it. That is really good on Siski to be able to know how to time that in this matchup. That's kind of crucial if you're going to be able to take down a Rosalina as good as Homika. Right, and Homika's got that Luma just back on deck. Nice grab there. And uh, I like the patience there from Siski to be like, okay, they're going to call Luma. Let me just hold shield real quick. There's a rapid jab from center stage. Not going to kill because Luma did not get the last hitbox. There's a rapid jab at the ledge, though. And this is, yeah, you can't exactly get away from there. I think Siski needed to hold the shield longer or angle it. Because uh, rolling, you would have gone into into Rosa's, and you know if you just kind of held it, you eventually got shield poke. So again, like you were saying about the DDD thing, yeah, there are some situations where you just can't do anything at play. Yeah, and it's just on you to really make the not only make the right decision, but time how you make that decision. Dash attack barely not going to do it against this Rosalina right now. Um, Samus player, does the dash attack um, put the Luma and hit stun? I want to say yes. Yes. It, it, it does, but it also kind of stops the attack a little bit, which gives Rosa enough time to put up shield. And then her, her up smash out of shield is ridiculously strong. We've been seeing that used to punish Siski a number of times. Oh, and she's dashing ahead of the Luma, and Siski was well ready to punish that twice. <laughs> you see what we're talking about here when we talk about dealing with charge shot? That was the one time in like the entire set that Hamaka chose to not deal with charge shot, and then they were at like 42% in two hits. Yeah. Now, I, I, I thought Zare was going to be a pretty, uh, you know, non-factor in this matchup. But frankly, I, I think Siski's been using it well to poke Luma behind Hamaka. Uh, so that charge shot is going to fall out. Now, this is a full charge charge shot, which ordinarily you don't like to see. But when you jump in looking like you're going to go for a backer and then be reverse it like that, catching your opponent and hit stun. That is a loaded gun, baby. And it is going to give Siski the second match. Crazy option on the part of Suski to go for right there. That Waveland up B right there, trying to catch uh, Homika with something unorthodox. Was able to even out, uh, even it out immediately though. But the adaptation throughout this set, waiting for not even just waiting for some of these gravitational pulls, but just paying closer attention to how Homika is moving, how to where the positioning is. Not even just out of disadvantage, but in the neutral situations like that, taking advantage of the character when the star is gone, landing those charge shots like any Santa's player not wants to, needs to do, in order to really just keep this character, you know, afloat.
Or forming, yeah, a float. That's a good way to. That's a good. That's a good uh, word right there. I like a float. So. Face fire that we saw yes, earlier. Yes, sir. So we are here on Pokemon Stadium Two. Champ Samus loves biplats. I, I will put it that way. It's a longer stage, uh, but sent Noodle's a lot harder to hold center on in a stage like this. So being under those platforms is really strong against Luma, or against Rosa and Luma, and, and also against Samus. Right now, you can see uh, Hamaka doing that very, very nicely, and is, is doing a good job, like, using their up tilt pressure, their up smash pressure, to catch Siski whenever Siski gets on that platform. Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot uh, easier to catch those landings when they're on those kinds of platforms. You know, being on platforms and ultimate, especially when you're playing the neutral, can sometimes just be a bad thing, considering the options off of it are not always the best, depending on what character you play and uh, and such. The neutrals reset here once again, trying to whip out that charge shot while they can, while the star is not there. That was a crucial miss on the part of uh, Siski right there. They definitely needed that one to try to just take the early lead in this game. And unfortunately, now having to play the neutral with that star once again and pop back up in the air with the up smash and back into the corner we go. That was yeah. a little uh, fight uphill there. A lot of Samus players are corner creep. We're starting to see a lot of that right now here from Siski. And Hamaka definitely not one to let things like that go astray. Because right now, I mean, Hamaka is doing a good job of pinning Siski. Whenever you are in the corner, you have fewer options. Whenever you have an all-encompassing neutral game, like a, a Luma with Rosa at their back, it is very, very difficult to make a pass. Then again, Luma is gone, so we're going to be seeing Hamaka retreat a little bit. Just looking for whiff punishes at this point. Yeah, this is definitely where Rosalina goes on survival mode for sure. You don't want to be, like, fighting too much in, like, uh, in the beef. With a character like Rosa when the star is not there, she deliberately doesn't have, like, not even, I want to say the best, but she deliberately has some kind of awkward hurtboxes that the star definitely makes up for around. Hence the design of the there puppet character as the dash attack is going to take the stock and even this game out. Yeah, nice catch on the landing there from Siski. Siski back in the corner, though, trying to probably bait out or, or go through the uh, invincibility frames, but cornering yourself to do so, not always a great idea against this character. Nice jump from Ledge to avoid the F smash, but right now, Amaka just has every option covered. Yeah, and I love the way they, uh, I love the way that Homika stalled in the air a little bit and then just drifted back nice. towards the ledge to avoid the get-up attack from the ledge from Samus players, because they know that Siski, especially Samus players, love to do that, considering how gigantic that hitbox is. And Luma, as I say that, eats that particular hitbox and goes up in the air for it, but still not dying because of the heavy, heavy weight that Dark Samus is, Lair. Yeah, Dark Samus is a very, very heavy girl. So and that armor, uh, the whatever synthetic stuff that they put together for that, is definitely going to be paying dividends here. Yeah, for right? sure, for sure. It looks heavy to me. Yeah. Two charge shots, though. Take it this close. This is Samus with Rage, too, uh, which is something you got to keep in mind, especially whenever they have charge shot. Yeah, that was lingering little star bits. It's going to force Siski back to ledge. Nice. Jab one to back row. Tail as old as time. Trying to get rid of the Luma. It's gone. Okay, this is a potential ledge trap situation. Yeah. This is where the Kinder Trick sells and being able to get that. Yep, that's Siski for you. Beautifully placed bomb on the part of Siski right there to pop Rosalina up right there. Gravitational pull could have absorbed it, but it would have forced Rosalina back to the ledge. But that forward air going to take the stock right there, and we have ourselves a last stock situation in this top 16 qualifier. Yep, game three, baby. And that up smash being used in great effect here by Homika. Homika's been doing a good job of, of using that to catch jump in, catch dash attack. It's been a really good thing to punish Nairs. In general, I think Siski needs to kind of start relying on those uh, Zairs a little bit more too. Uh, it's been doing a good job of poking the Luma and also going over top of the Luma to hit uh, Hamaka's Rosa sometimes. But still, jumping in like that, we keep seeing it get punished by Hamaka. Over again and retreating back to the ledge, not wanting to catch uh, Siski in a rapid jab while they were shielding, knowing they probably would have eaten a punish at the end of that day, or at the very least, would have to reset neutral once again. In between the star and a hard nice. place right now. Gonna take yeah. that charge shot. Good dash attack to get him off. Okay, here we go. This is a charge shot on deck. Yeah, a mid high charge. That's about 20%. And finally, Siski has a lead this match, but then again, not hitting that tech on the platform to allow that there to happen. And you can't jump over top of that because you're either going to get up air or up smash. I think Siski needs to just kind of stay grounded right now, buddy, because jumping is not the thing you want to do when you're at this high of a percent. No, not at all, for sure. That uh, star, going to eat it right there. Oh. oh my god, this is absolutely anybody's game. Launching the Luma right in the face is going to be able to get that rapid jab and off the level we go, says Siski. I genuinely don't know who this is going to go for. Retreating back smash. to get the up smash, but no Luma there. But for the cover. That's wow. it, baby. 
Look at that. What a beautiful puppet character oh, on the oh, part oh, of Omega to end that game right there. We'll take a look at that replay once that one comes back around. Nice little back air to catch with the star right there. Yeah. My god, like the, the way the Luma was positioned at the end there to get that up smash and then just calling it back at just the right time. That was textbook, Rosa. It was. It was textbook and it was gorgeous. But something worth mentioning here is Siski had a... It was so close to getting rid of that last Luma that was out. Uh, you can see it there. It's sweating. It's sweating right now. But then again, good placement, staying grounded and recognizing that Siski was going to drift in there because they didn't want to go back to ledge because you know how scary Rosa is at ledge whenever they have a Luma active. So Siski, one of the best players in Europe, I believe the seed of this event, is going to be falling to loser's bracket quite early. And after Glutony being eliminated this early, things like that are, are quite, quite terrifying. But hey, hell of a set from Homica. They played that about as well as you possibly